Hi, I'm Katie, and this is the 2024 Baking Challenge, where I have selected 52 recipes, one for every single week, recipes I've never tried before. And I picked them all from one of my favorite websites, King Arthur Baking Company. I am not sponsored by King Arthur, although if they want to, like, I'm not opposed, let's talk. <laughs> no, but really, there are four things that I can promise you about this series. The first one is that we are baking on a budget. The second is that we're cutting corners and taking shortcuts if we can. The third is that I'm probably gonna alter some of these recipes to account for the picky eater in the house and my laundry list of food allergies. And the fourth thing that I can promise you is that I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes. I'm gonna mess things up. There's gonna be some fails. There's gonna be some chaos. There's gonna be messes because that's just who I am. But we're gonna do this anyways and we're gonna have fun while we do it. Now. It's March. It is the third month of the challenge. This is week number nine. And because it's March, I'm gonna cram as much Irish baking as I can because I happen to have some Irish DNA going. So week number nine is Irish cream shortbread. The photo on their website makes it look like a cross between a biscuit and a cookie. Um, I don't know what shortbread is. I don't know that I've ever had it. So let's get baking and find out what this is. I should probably set the record straight. I know I mentioned my Irish DNA earlier and I took a DNA test, oh my gosh, over oh, probably about 10 years ago. And originally I had English and then the next one was Irish and I was really excited about that. Well, you know, those things, they keep building, they keep learning, they keep adding to your DNA story. So I am actually 36% um, English, and then I am, no, 39% English, 22% Scottish, and only 17% Irish, which is kind of a shock to me that German wasn't higher up because my family has like German last names, um, but still, I have actually been kind of obsessed with Ireland for a long time. My kindergarten teacher, Mildred Robbins, um, who I remember with so much love, I don't know if she was first generation Irish or, um, or actually an Irish immigrant, but I remember she played the harpsichord and she was so wonderful. And when I was in middle school, she sent me a postcard from Ireland. She and her husband were relocating or traveling through Ireland. And I still have that in a box somewhere and I treasure it. And I think I've been obsessed with Ireland ever since. So yeah, that's probably where my love of, of Ireland came in. Um, obviously that was 40 years ago. It stuck with me. I've never been to Ireland, but fingers crossed, maybe I'll get there someday. In the meantime, we're making Irish cream shortbread. This recipe seems pretty straightforward. There's not a ton of ingredients to go into it and it's not gonna take a lot of time either, which is excellent because last week was a little more involved than I had expected it to be. That happens a lot. Okay, let's get into this recipe. So the ingredients for this are pretty straightforward. Kicking it all off is 16 tablespoons of soft butter. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you set your butter out ahead of time. I like to put mine out about two hours, but I did a thing this morning. I made muffins for breakfast and as the oven was cooling, I thought, you know what? I'll just stick my, my sticks of butter in there for just a couple minutes and they'll get nice and soft. And then I forgot that I put them in there and I came back to a plate of melted butter. Um, it's been sitting here for a while now to kind of solidify back up. Now remember, Eight tablespoons of butter is one stick of butter, which is a half a cup of butter. So you're gonna need two sticks of butter. I'm terrible at regular math, but I'm really great with butter math. So we're gonna put this into our mixer, like so. I'm just gonna scrape everything off in there. Um, no butter should be wasted. We are not wasting butter in this house. Also, butter is expensive. I need a cow. Um, so that I can just make my own butter. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to 
raise the bowl of the mixer and you can do this by hand. I'm not doing it by hand today. I have had a long day. Oh, it helps if you plug the mixer in. <laughs> I did not. Um, see, if you come here expecting to see some kind of professional and together baking show, you're in the wrong place because that is not how I'm operating ever. Um, I can be professional at work, but I don't work in the kitchen. So there you have it and there you are. So you're gonna make sure that your butter is soft. We're gonna beat it for a couple minutes here, make sure it gets nice and smooth. And then you're adding your half a cup of light brown sugar. I have the recipe here so that I can make sure that I don't leave anything out. Cause I didn't pre-measure anything today like I usually do. All right. And you're gonna make sure, as most of the time you're using brown sugar, you're gonna make sure that you're packing your brown sugar in. The recipe almost always says packed. So you are compacting it. And oh, that's too much. Oops, that's way too much. Um, yeah, okay, you know what, I don't. Look, it all fits, great, okay. <laughs> See, chaos baking. I didn't anticipate that this simple bake was going to be chaotic, but here we are. So, my butter is looking nice and smooth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add my sugar now. Woo, okay, just kind of threw it right in there. And we're gonna let this go until that's nice and smooth too. The other thing is that we have some salt going in, half a teaspoon of salt. Yeah, half a teaspoon of salt. I just eyeball it. And we're gonna wait and we're gonna let that get nice and smooth. Because you want that sugar to incorporate really well. Um, I have learned I really cannot stick a scraper in here while this is on. Um, it just doesn't, I tend to make a mess. So also my butter's not incorporating all the way in with the sugar. I'm just gonna scrape it off of the sides and then get this starting again. For flavoring for this shortbread, we are using either vanilla or Irish whiskey, or if you don't have either of those and you have some Irish cream, which is what I have, that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use two teaspoons of this Irish cream. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that now while this all works together. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. Yep. This is gonna be awesome. So, there is a weird ingredient in this and that would be rice flour. Um, now, you can buy rice flour or you can make your own, which is what I chose to do because I looked at the sizes of rice flour that I could get versus the cost and I just wasn't willing to spend money on rice flour because this is the only recipe that I know of that I'm using that's gonna call for it. So there are ways that you can make your own. It's white rice and a coffee grinder or a food processor, or if you're like me and you wanna be a little extra, I got this grain mill attachment for my KitchenAid because I wanted to grow some corn and things and make my own cornmeal and stuff like that this year. So I unboxed this thing today and got it out and it worked really well. Here's my rice flour. And I just used instant rice. Probably not exactly what they had in mind, but like I said, we're kind of taking the easy way out. I would have had to special order rice flour and I wasn't willing to do that. So my sugar and my butter and my Oh my gosh, that smells so good. And my Irish cream are all going really well. All right, we're gonna need two cups of all-purpose flour. 
get my holder out here. So here's a half. And another half is one. So I need two more of these. I always measure by half in here because it's really, it's really tricky for me to get the, um, the one cup measuring into this container of mine. Now this dough is definitely gonna be clumpy. All right, and then it's a half a cup of rice flour. So let me just, it's very fine. I like my grinder because it enabled me to choose the, um, the coarseness that I wanted and I chose super fine. All right. So this is really crumbly and I don't think it's supposed to be that crumbly. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my Irish cream until it reaches, it's very crumbly here. It's a very dry day, so I'm just gonna pour some of this in until that dough starts to stick together and really form an actual dough. Mine's still very sandy. I do wish that they would show more photos of the different processes, steps in the process on their website, but they know what they're doing and I don't. It's starting, the more I add, the more this is starting to stick together and it's gonna taste a lot better too. So super excited about that. We may end up going through this entire bottle. Yep, that's good. I think another splash. And then my dough's gonna start to, yep, there it goes. It's starting to hold together. There's not that much left in the bottle. Should I just, yeah, all right, cool. <laughs> there we go, and there's nothing left in the bottle. All right. So the other thing that you're going to need for this is two eight inch round pans, um, some plastic wrap, or you can use a shortbread mold. I don't have one of those and I'm not gonna buy one. So I'm going with round pans. Oh my gosh, this looks, it looks like a really thick cookie dough. Um, I'm gonna actually have some up top that I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this go just another couple minutes. So you want to lightly grease your round pans. I'm running a little bit of an experiment. You know, I like to just go ahead and use um, my Pam cooking spray. Well, when I make cakes, I don't use cooking spray. I put vegetable oil or vegetable shortening in, and then I add some flour, and I just work that flour around. That way my cake comes out very easily and with a nice crust. Hang on a minute, let me dump the excess into the sink here. Um, so I got to thinking maybe I should start doing that when I'm making these recipes. So I'm gonna do one pan like that and I'm gonna do one pan with the cooking spray and we're gonna see what comes out easiest. Here's this. We're not gonna need these yet, so you don't have to worry about it yet. Um, our dough is actually, you know what, I'll save the spray until we're ready for this part. This is gonna be fine just sitting on the counter. Our dough is going to get divided up, wrapped in plastic, so it's gonna get divided in half, wrapped in plastic, and oh my gosh, you guys can see my messy cabinet. <sighs> and then set in the fridge for an hour. Let me move the recipe out of the way here so you can see, because they did say, I do like this, they said each half will weigh about 11 ounces. I love that for me. You're supposed to form it into a seven inch disc. We'll see, see if I can't manage that. Cover it in plastic wrap and store it in the fridge for an hour. Everybody loves plastic wrap. You know, it's like the bane of my existence. But that's okay. All right, lowering my bowl. 
Let me show you what my dough looks like. I added quite a bit more of the cream than what the recipe called for. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a little. So here's my dough. It is very smooth. It's not sticky, um, but it is definitely smooth. So probably all of that butter. All right, I'm gonna try to measure out 11 ounces here. Turn this on, make sure it's set to ounces. That's, that's 12. You know what, mine might be a little, mine might be a little heavier since I added so much more. But let's see what this is. This is 12 on the nose and that's 14. So I'm going to take off to get it down to 13 because I do want it to be even. So I should have two 13 ounce rounds here. I get there. 13, three, six. Just a little bit more. Another generous pinch here. Let's see here, 13, two, three. 13, one, five, close enough. Okay. Let's see here, wipe my hands off. I tried to keep my kitchen scale from getting dirty um, because I don't want to have to clean it. <laughs> okay. Now, recipe says we're going to, see I've already messed up my plastic, but we're going to get this into a seven inch round disc. That's a circle, yo. I didn't break out my ruler for this, but I can kind of eyeball it. Okay, now I'm going to try to untangle my plastic wrap and get this sealed pretty tightly. We don't want it getting crusty in the fridge. There we go. Okay. All right, there's one round. Let me do the other. So we're going to chill this for an hour in the fridge, like I said, probably like four times now because I repeat myself a lot and I'm really sorry about that. I lose my train of thought, who doesn't? It's been a really busy day too. I actually meant to get this done earlier, but I had a little yard fire that was 100% my fault. Um, get you a, a friend and neighbor that when you're on the phone with them and you say, oh no, this fire's getting out of control. No, I've got it. No, no, it's, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to call you back. <laughs> and then two seconds later, they're pulling up your driveway <laughs> while you're stamping out fire in the yard because you weren't paying attention when you should have been. Um, get a friend like that. <laughs> so it's been, a, it's been an exciting and busy day, but I am happy that we're gonna have shortbread, whatever shortbread is. It's a cookie, right? I'm not crazy, it is a cookie. All right, there's my rounds done. These are gonna go into the fridge for an hour. Now, before I pull them out of the fridge, at the end of that hour, I'm going to get my oven preheating to 325, okay? 325 degrees. I will see you back in an hour. Okay, my dough has been in the fridge for an hour. My oven is preheated to 325. Now we're gonna deal with getting our dough pressed into the pans. So like I mentioned before, two eight inch lightly greased round pans. I'm doing an experiment to see which pan is gonna release easier. This has vegetable shortening and flour in it, and I'm just gonna spray this one with cooking spray. So, there we go. Liberal amount of cooking spray. All right, here we go. You know, the funny thing is, is that I haven't even looked into a shortbread pan. Um, maybe if this recipe turns out, I might. Okay, I'm gonna stick that one in there. And I'm going to unwrap and put this one in the other. And then we're going to, oh my gosh. <laughs> it smells like Irish cream, I love this. All right, the recipe says that we need to press the dough down I'm gonna use um, 
this roller that I got. This is a, you know I love my Pampered Chef. <laughs> this is a Pampered Chef product. But I'm sure that you can find one on Amazon and it'll do just the same thing. My dough is kind of pulling apart here. Maybe I'll just use my hands after all. Okay, yeah, use your hands. It's a lot easier. Um, my dough was kind of separating at the edges as I was pressing with the rolling pin. This way, it's not. So try to give it as even as you can. Make sure you're all the way up against your edges. No splits. Remember, we're not going for perfection here because we don't do things perfectly because we're human. Humans make mistakes. Now I'm just kind of smoothing down some of the edges here. All right, swap. I like to put, if I'm doing cakes, and I usually do two to three round pans, um, especially if I'm doing more than one thing in the oven at a time, I like to put them on cookie sheets. That way I only have to pull out one thing from the oven. Um, personal preference. And sometimes I overfill things and I get some, some leakage. So that way I don't have to clean my oven which I don't know if you peeped in the uh, bacon tart video, my oven is not clean. I should probably handle that. I'll put that on my spring cleaning list. Um, yeah, don't like cleaning ovens. I don't like the self-cleaning mode. It stinks up the entire house. And I don't like using all the chemicals. And then I don't like using the natural ways of cleaning the ovens because this is so time consuming and it's so much work. Okay, my shortbread is in here. Now my hands are a mess. You're going to need a fork because we are going to prick our shortbread all over to keep it from rising and getting puffy in the oven. And honestly, <laughs> the uh, chaos part of my brain is like, ooh, only prick one and see what happens with the other one. But I'm gonna follow the recipe. <laughs> I'm gonna do both of them. You don't have to. Um, yeah, but I'm being good. Look at me being good and following the recipe and doing what I'm supposed to do. I probably went a little overboard. I got holes everywhere. That's okay. Okay, these are gonna go into the oven for 32 to 38 minutes. You're gonna set a timer for 32 minutes, but you're gonna set a second timer for 18 minutes because at 18 minutes, we're gonna check on them. If they're starting to poof up, you're gonna take a spatula and gently press down on it and then let it finish baking, okay? So 32 minutes is our minimum bake time, up to 38 but set a timer at 18 minutes to check. When these come out of the oven, we're gonna let them sit in the pan to cool for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'll see you back after that. Okay, so it did not take my shortbread a full 38 minutes, and mine also did not puff up. So let me show you what I've got here. This is the one that I used the cooking spray for. So we're just gonna see if I can't maybe Okay, I'm gonna go get my little scraper. <laughs> and uh, it's definitely kind of stuck in there. So let's see if I can loosen it a little without damaging my pan, because I use this pan all the time for cakes. Oh boy. Getting a little bit of wiggle room here, but not a ton. Oh no, I don't want to be scraping it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> did I scrape my pan? I did, I scraped my pan, ooh. Okay, cooking spray does not come out easily. Um, this is solid. Let's see how the floured pan went. 
Well, that came out way easier. Um, okay, these are cute. Look, got little shortbread rounds here. So it says to use a serrated knife to cut. I'm just gonna use a steak knife to cut it into eighth. So we've got wedges. We're basically slicing a pizza. So this is neat. The outside is kind of crunchy, but the inside when I'm cutting through it feels um, kind of like a soft cookie. So it slices very easily. It's kind of crumbly though. That's okay. I don't mind. I'm not mad about it. It smells really good. I'm not sure how to describe what this smells like. Um, I can definitely smell the Irish cream. So I'm really excited about that. Okay. Moment of truth. Mmm. Wow. It almost just kind of falls apart and melts in your mouth. It has a really light flavor. It's not overly sweet. And I can taste the Irish cream in there. I could see, um, yeah, I could, yeah. This is good, I like this a lot. I don't know why my fridge just beeped. Um, this is really good. <laughs> okay. So the recipe says that you can store these well wrapped for up to a week or freeze for longer. I could see serving this with some fruit. I really don't know why my fridge is beeping at me. That's really weird. I could see serving this with some fruit. Um, this is a good amount of shortbread too. I think like one piece would be great uh, for me. I could see doing it in a square pan and cutting it into squares that way. And maybe like just dipping the bottoms in some fudge. That would be really cool too. Again, like with so many of the recipes that we have made so far during this challenge, you can really change up the flavors and make some alterations to make it your own. So I'm going to call this a winning bake from King Arthur Baking Company. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this recipe and I hope that you have enjoyed the challenge so far. I still can't believe we're in month number three. If you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. I post these recipe videos every Saturday morning between seven and nine. Sometimes life gets crazy and it's a little later before I can post. Head over to our Facebook page, that link is below. Every Wednesday morning, I post the ingredients that you're gonna need for that weekend's bake. And also you can follow along over there. A lot of my friends will post progress photos as they're working through these recipes and the finished products and their take and how they're changing it up. And we just have a lot of fun over there. Again, this is my challenge. It doesn't have to be yours. You can go back and look at the previous recipes. There is a 2024 baking challenge playlist and I encourage you to bake what you want, have some fun, and join me next week. I'll see you then.